Good afternoon, everyone. We want to thank you for being here this afternoon to celebrate the life of Rose and to be with the family as they grieve her loss and to pay our last respect to her. At this time, we're going to stand for the procession. The family can remain seated, but we're going to ask the congregation to stand. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the folders and from the noisome pestilent. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wing shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and butler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flyeth by day, nor for the pestilent that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high thy habitation there shall no evil befall thee neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling for he shall give his angel charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways they shall bear thee up in their hands lest thou dash thy foot against a stone thou shalt tread upon the lion and the other the young lion and the dragon shall thou trample under feet, because he had set his love upon me. Therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he have known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I'll be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk to the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup run it over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life, and you will dwell in the presence of the Lord forever. I'm glad you're all standing because I didn't have to ask you to do that. Our opening hymn is hymn number 197, The King of Love My Shepherd Is. Feed her. 
I strayed, but yet in love he sought me, and on his shoulder gently laid, and all rejoicing brought me. And a song First reading of the scriptures is from Psalms 121. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills. From whence cometh my help? My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. And the second reading is taken from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18. <clears throat> but I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died, and rose again, even so God will bring him, bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus, we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. Let us pray. 
Let us pray. Our Father and our God, at times like these, we're happy that we have a Savior. At times like these, we are happy that we have an anchor. An anchor that's laid clearly in that rock of ages, even Jesus. Lord, we thank you for the life, the inspiration, the challenge, the hope that you've given us in the life of Roosevelt. Lord, we thank you for the energy that she always left and the impression she's made on every life she's touched. We thank you for her intellect. We thank you for her compassion and her love. We thank you for the joys and the light that she has left in this world. But above all, dear Father, we thank you for Jesus, through whom there's hope today. Hope in understanding that although death has her, death can't keep her. Because she served one who is the resurrection and the life. And so, dear Father, we pray that even now you'd go by her siblings, her nieces and nephews. You'd comfort them, help them to understand that the void, although a void has been left in their lives, that Jesus can still fill that void. And help us, dear Father, to so live that when he that shall come will come and he says come ye blessed of my father we will be numbered among that ransom throng so bless the entire family we pray cradle them in your arms comfort them with your love and keep ignited in their hearts the hope that comes in knowing jesus who is the resurrection and the life. In his dear name we pray. Amen. To the family and friends, To the members of this community and our church, I'd like to extend our condolences to the Martin and Brian family, praying that God's comfort and peace will be upon all of you as we remember Rosabel Helen May Martin. I, as the pastor of this church, did not get the chance to spend the time with her as she left for warmer climate as I was coming in, but I did have the occasion to meet her once or twice, and my wife had the privilege of meeting her as well, and described memorable moments of a very pleasant heart and someone of a quiet spirit, fun to talk to, and full of life. 
so those few memories of her greeting her here in this church will always be remembered in our hearts. I have heard of all the good things that she has done. I have read the obituary. And yes, indeed, her life has touched the lives of many. And for that good reason, she must be a special person. So we are grateful for the time she gave to this church and to the different ministries in this church. We pray that now that she has gone on and is no more with us, that her memories will be cherished. I pray that our memory in this church will be a blessing to those who think of her. And I pray that the ministries in which she served will continue the legacy of doing good to others. Our thoughts and prayers are with all those who hurt and ache, but we grieve not as do others, we have the blessed hope. So know, dear friends and family, on behalf of this church, myself, my wife, the church administration, our leaders and our members, we celebrate with you the life of our dear sister and we cherish the memories she has left behind and we pray that you will take hope in the life she lived for she lived the life of faith in our God so may God bless you and comfort you as we celebrate her life I'd like to extend my condolences to the Martin family and the extended family. I've known Rose my whole life, and as a child, I had a really strong attachment to her. I was her little shadow. And coming full circle, my daughter ended up having the same type of attachment to her, so I thought it was really, really special. But we can hold on to faith and the hope that we will meet again. Darkness and death 
that will lead me at last to my friend who I believe that Christ who was slain on the cross has the power to change lives today because he changed me completely a new life is mine that is why by the cross I shall stand I believe in a hill called Mount Calvary. I believe whatever the cost. And when time has surrendered and earth is no still cling to the old rugged cross At this time, you will be hearing the various acknowledgments from the various persons and churches around the New York, Delaware, and the Florida areas. Dear family members of Wendell and Clarence, we at the City Temple Church are so sorry and so saddened to hear of the loss of Rosabel Martin. Please accept our deepest condolences and our warmest sympathies. The scripture described death as a vicious enemy that plagues the world of sin. But also they remind us that one day death itself will die. We look forward to that day when death will be swallowed up in victory. But until then, let us be faithful so that we will be ready to meet her when the Lord returns. May the God of comfort fill your hearts with his peace during this difficult time. And may her fond memories live on with you forever. Submitted lovingly by the Temple Seventh-day Adventist Church, Pastor Lendor, Senior Pastor, and Pastor Tricia Payne, Associate Pastor. To Elder Ralph and Donna Martin, on behalf of the members and officers of the, Vo of the Voice of Truth Seventh-day Adventist Church in Delaware, we extend to you and your family our deepest condolences on the passing of your sister and sister-in-law. Siblings share a bond that is unique and irreplaceable, but when this bond is broken by death, it creates a void in the family circle that cannot be filled. So may your Christian faith, your strength, and your belief in the blessed hope bring you peace and comfort during this time. As you mourn this significant loss, take comfort in knowing that Rosabel believed in the promise found in 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. 
Then we which are alive and remain will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Today you sorrow. In God's tomorrow there will be no sickness, nor death, nor dying. In God's tomorrow every tear will pass away at the dawning of the day. For God's tomorrow will be better than today. So as you continue to live your lives without her, cherish the wonderful memories and laughter that were created as siblings and reflect on them knowing that she is resting in Jesus who is the life giver. Your entire family, contains to, to, your entire family continues to remain in the prayers of your brothers and sisters at Voice of Truth Church. And please remain faithful that when Jesus returns to claim his own, you will be reunited with your sister and your sister-in-law. And this is lovingly submitted by Carlos Maconico, pastor of the Voice of Truth Seventh-day Adventist Church. In loving memory of Rosabel H. Martin, with a natural sense of caring and a kind and helpful ways, Rosabel touched many lives and brightened many days. We who share your sorrow deeply sympathize with you, for we understand your sense of loss and will miss Rosabel too. To the Martin family, though I cannot be with you today, you are in my thoughts and most of all, my prayers as you celebrate the life, the love, the labor and the legacy of my dear friend and choir member for over 20 years, Rosabel Martin. It is never easy to lose someone we love, but I hope that you will find a measure, in com measure of comfort in knowing that God, whom we love and serve, has perfect timing in all that he does. May the wonderful memories you have of Rosabel provide you peace in the days ahead. When the phone stops ringing, when the text stop coming, just remember that there is one who will never ever forget you. His name is Jesus. He is a mender of the brokenhearted, and according to Isaiah 1, 3, 6, 1, 3, he will give you beautiful ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, and a garment of praise instead of despair. I look forward to seeing Rosabelle in a place called heaven where there will be no more sorrow and no more pain. Blessings to all of you. Anne M. Van Hook, Hillsboro, North Carolina, October 13th, 2023. Thoughts and prayers are with you. May memories of the loved ones and the prayers of those who are thinking of you bring you comfort at this difficult time. To the Martin family from the Samuel family. It is hard to find words that might bring comfort to you right now. We just hope that you'll remember how much we care and the thoughts are with you. And this is coming from Chris and Kyle. With sincere sympathy, praying for your peace and your comfort, Ron and, Ver and Veronica. May God's hope-filled promises bring comfort to your soul and peace to your heart. With heartfelt sympathy, Mary Johnson. Thinking of you and of asking God to surround you with his perfect peace and love, from Wilbur and Mel and Meline Court, may the blessed hope buoy your spirits up. May God's loving presence comfort you, his peace restores you, and his promise of eternal life sustains you during this time of loss. Ralph and Rose Mundy. Thinking of you and wishing you courage to help you through day by day and hoping your memories will warm your heart always and bring so much comfort your way with heartfelt sympathy, love Doug and Charlesworth. 
to the Martin family, the ones we love shines on us too in the good things we do for the world with each other, in memories which are never lost, you're in our hearts forever, the Dawsons. With caring thoughts and deepest sympathy, love, Beverly King and Ernest King. God is close to you at this time of sorrow. May you find peace and strength in the comfort of his love, deepest sympathy from a slew of people, and some of them I will call, which can be Samuel Christian, Elaine Campbell, S. Brown, Lorraine Cam Elaine Campbell, as I said before, and Lorianne. And there are many others attached to this card that you can read later. So um, ordinary people can do ordinary things if they just have faith. I have faith in you that you'll be okay, whatever the outcome. I have faith in God that he will give you the strength you need to make it through. Love the Walter family. As you continue to go through this time of mourning, we ask that God's blessing be with you and continue to comfort you. There really are no words, or the right words, to say right now. And um, the cousins, the nieces and the nephews silently voted and um, have designated Marsha as the speaker for all of us. But there is definitely something to be said about Aunt Rose and the light that she had that illuminated beyond what our eyes could see. And so I think it's really important, I'm gonna ask, I'm putting all of us on the spot, all of the nieces, the nephews, to please stand just for a moment. Aunt Rose meant a lot to all of us. She was light, she was strength, she was power. And if you didn't hear it from her on a regular basis, I promise you, she was praying it into existence for you. She was telling your dad, she was telling your mom. She was putting it out in the atmosphere for you. I am encouraging, pleading for all of us not to find ourselves back in this space again with the next time that we see each other and connect because her light was to bring us together all the time. Please. Lean on each other right now. 
and remember to hold that light she had in her heart for all of us. You have made, sorry, you may have known Rosabelle Martin as Miss Martin, Rose, or even Rosie. But to me, she was simply Auntie Rose. She taught me many things like time management. Auntie Rose was a prompt woman. When she gave a time, she meant it. <laughs> they know. And if you weren't ready, you would get left behind. Aunt Rose taught me the value of travel. Even from a young age, she made sure to take myself, Etta, and Candace along so that we had a chance to see life outside of our city, state, and even country. She was a woman that commanded respect. You knew when she was in the room. She had a certain presence, a beautiful smile, an infectious laugh, and a joyful spirit. She made you feel welcomed and wanted. She was assertive, but fair. Intellectual, business and finance savvy, but she never deemed herself better than the next. She was humble. Auntie Rose was a go-getter. Once she had something set in her mind, she planned and executed it. She made things happen. God blessed her hands. Whatever she touched, you knew it was gonna be something good. Whether it was tailoring or sewing dresses and skirts, decorations at Thanksgiving or Christmas, baking and decorating multi-tiered cakes, and the food. Eggplant rollatini, Come on now, some of y'all know. <laughs> Turkey wings, black cake, braided loaves of bread made from scratch, curry goat, dukana, saltfish, and fried dumplings, just to name a few. Every Sabbath was like a mini Thanksgiving, a spread of delicious food. If you never made it to Fifth Avenue, I'm sorry to tell you, but you missed out. One thing for certain and two things for sure, you knew you were gonna eat good. And if you were lucky, you would leave with a plate to go. Auntie Rose was that girl, a diva, a class act. Whether dressed down in a t-shirt and jeans or in her Sabbath best, from head to toe, Hair done, nails done, face beat, high heels, a well-fitted suit with a pocketbook to match. She radiated confidence, grace, and style. Black girl magic, if you please. She loved to shop. And there was nothing better than getting an outfit for an even better price, and she wasn't shy about it. But more than shopping, traveling, and just enjoying life, Auntie Rose loved her family and friends. She showed her love through her actions by serving, just like her sisters Leona and Veronica did before they passed. She was a faithful member to this church and performed in various capacities. She served her community by teaching, tutoring, and donating her time at the food pantry. She served her family. She would often open up her home to her family and make sure they were comfortable and well-fed. If she were still here today, I imagine, she would tell all of us, don't cry for me, darling. I lived, I laughed, and I loved. Life is full of twists and turns, but you learn to adapt. You learn to appreciate every moment, whether good or bad. 
cherish one another, and be kind to one another. Serve the Lord, and know we will see each other again when Jesus returns. I thought I'd um, yield my time to all of Rose's friends, but I'm impressed just to share with you her legacy of service. You know, Rose Bell, she said, I only drive a Lexus. Is anyone here from the pantry in the Bronx? Thank you. You know, our conversations were, I went to the pantry, oh Ralph, they had so much stuff. Occasionally, I would come and I would look in her car, and in the back of this Lexus is just like all kinds of marks because she brought so much stuff in it. I'm going, Roosevelt, get your box. It didn't matter to her. It wasn't about the car. It was about the service. And she would give, and they in turn would give. And you know, sometimes we talk, she said, you know, Ralph, I haven't had to buy eggs. I haven't had to buy this, I haven't buy that. She said, I don't know why God loved Rose so. Service to her fellow man, service in the church, that's the legacy I'm carrying of my sister. And I challenge the next generation. Don't be selfish. Your presence here today is a testament to her level of service to her fellow man. So I encourage all of us, as we remember Rose, remember her legacy was service. Thank you. I might look strange here, but yes, the last name is, well, let me give you my full name if I can. Dalton August Ramchandra Luchman Singh Martin. <laughs> I have the pleasure to spend a lot of time with Rose and with her brothers. So that is why I claim the last name Martin, and I thank you for it. I'm going to call up a few friends now. They're affectionately known as the Golden Girls. They're sitting to my, our, my right, your left, Sister Maxine Phillips, Adria Cromarty, my wife, Joanne Luchman Singh, Sister Gail Beal, and Sister Cheryl Sands. They're going to speak and keep the two minute time limit. It, yes, it'll be. Yeah, so if, if you take too long, I'm going to shave off two minutes. Come close. They act like they're shy. <laughs> <laughs> so we were known as the New Rochelle Divas. <laughs> there were five, and now there are four. So, uh, Rose treated us all like we were her sister. I felt closer to her though, because everywhere we went, people thought we were biological sisters. It was hard convincing them that we were not. My fondest memory of Rose is she was a commander in charge. She would come and say to me, Let's go. Without asking her where we're going, I would just get my stuff together and be ready to go. She said, let's go. I remember that night we went over to Queens, and Joanne knows what I'm talking about. I went, reluctantly, but we went. She said, let's go, when we did all our travels, but my fondest 
memory of traveling with her was, she said, let's go back in 2019. And Joanne and Dalton, they usually would join us on the trips, but this particular time they could not. She said, let's go. I said, where are we going? Hawaii. I didn't plan for it, but there I was on that plane going with Rose to Hawaii. We had a wonderful time, she and I, together. Um, so every time she said, let's go, I was ready and willing to go. I know, I've known Rose ever since she came to this country. Our paths continue crossing. We worked together in New York City. We would travel the train together. Then when we, she made the switch to education, I followed suit and I, suit, and I also made that switch to education. So she was a friend that st stuck closer than a brother. I thank God every day for her presence in my life, and I thank him for the example that she left. And Marsha, I'm still working on my time management. I knew, I knew Roosevelt from the first time, um, Veronica and George. Um, were on Hemingway and um, Ferdinand and she lived in this room and Veronica was my heart and Rose I said I love um, Veronica and she said I hear you <laughs> you know and she was always good to my family my family and the Martins were very very close so I'm gonna say I'm so glad we had this time together just to laugh or just to sing a song look like just before we get really started. It's the time we had to say so long. Amen. I know everyone calls Rosabelle. Rose, she was my Rosie. Um, since the style she had, I am, if I come to church sometimes and my brooch is not put on correctly, she'll stand and fix it and say, this is how you put it on correctly. But I want to send my love to, um, Rose didn't have any daughters or children, but Candace was like her daughter. And we knew she loved Candace as if it was her home. And I remember when they were saying they were going down to Florida, and Rose said, yeah, we're driving to Florida. Me and Candace is going to drive down to Florida. I said, Rose, you're going to drive all the way down to Florida? She said, girl, yeah, we're f I'm going to be fine. But that was the type of person Rose was. She didn't fear anything. And she always thought of everyone. Everyone sitting on these pews right now is testament of Rose Martin because our chairs were tattered and ripped and Rose spearheaded it with women's ministry to get all of these pews replaced. And she did not care until each row, row by row, and you see how huge our congregation is, that got done. And we can say thank you, Rose. So every time you come to New Rochelle and you sit down on these pews, you remember Rose Martin, Amen. my Rosie. Amen. To know the Martin family is to know love. But if you ever had a chance to know Rosabelle, my, 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 you know, Rosie's job, she wanted to teach me how to cook. Yes. And she said, she every tried. time, every time, Juju, you have to learn to cook. And, but what, what made it so special is that I knew, I knew, I knew I didn't like to cook, but I knew my husband liked to eat. So every weekend, when we went there, I had, I always would take my containers, but there were days when I didn't take those special containers. And she said, you know what, Juju, because you did, I said, that's all right, Rosie, you have a lot of Ziploc, so we're going to take the food in the Ziploc. But to know her and to know what she, what she meant to all of us, Faye, Beulah, Marie, and Denise, Cheryl, and the names could go on, all her friends, 
everyone was so special. And I want to thank you, family, for sharing her. Sister Audubary, and the names could just go on, but I just want to thank you for sharing her with us. Amen. Thank you. I am going to read a tribute to Rosabelle Helen May Martin, written by a 90 years young teacher who taught in the middle school of New York City as a teacher of English and elementary Parisian French. Rosabelle, a person of multi-talents, was someone you would surely have wanted a friend of hers to be. Employed by the Board of Education of New York City as a middle school teacher of mathematics who, despite all her skills, was a paragon of humility. Rosabelle, also an excellent soprano singer, enjoyed singing in the chancel choir of the New Rochelle Seventh-day Adventist Church. Rosabelle was admired also for her culinary skills. And if you were to visit her home any day, the aroma of appetizing foods cooking would bring to your heart many thrills. Why? Because you knew that some of them would be offered to you right away. I have to mention that Rosabelle showed a love for my mother, Alethea Searcy, that seemed to grow more each day and to swell. My mom, by the smile that covered her face, showed that this love not only was appreciated, but was shared as well. And so, dear relatives and loyal friends, hold your tears while Rosabelle is peacefully sleeping and unable to communicate with us now, we strongly hope and believe that Jesus, upon his second return, will awaken and escort her to heaven to see God. And before him, Rosabelle will make a deep bow.
Hello, New Rochelle. Not was not what we were expecting, was it? I heard somebody say it earlier that uh, um, Rosabelle was her Rosie. She was mine too. She had that spirit of just rosing us, you know. She was my alto in the chancel choir. Second soprano. She was one of the most faithful chancel choir members that I've ever had. And uh, she was also a very close and dear friend. She is my daughter's godmother. I want to sing this song for Rosie. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God and in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. I go
to the Martin family. On behalf of the Blair family, we want to convey our condolences in this year time and of bereavement and loss. I can assure you today that the God of all comfort is with you. And as you go through this process, be assured that he will never leave you nor forsake you. My time is limited, and so I would like to turn your attention to a passage of scripture taken from Luke chapter 24. Allow me to read in your hearing verses 14 and 15 and 21. And the Bible says, And behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem about threescore furlongs. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. Verse 21 but we trusted that it have been he which should have redeemed Israel. And beside all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Allow me to put a tag on this text and for the next few minutes speak to you from the topic, the Emmaus Road. The Emmaus Road. Let's pray, Father God, in this time of sorrow and grief, we need to hear a word from you today. We ask even now that your word will provide comfort and healing to all of us, but especially to the Martin family. We place this entire service and this message into your hand. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In our scripture reading, Luke tells the story of two men traveling on the road to Emmaus. We cannot help but identify with their pain, their sorrow, and their grief. We too are like pilgrims on a journey through life. We too feel the spears of life circumstances from time to time. We too are disappointed when our expectation come to a tragic end. They were on the Emmaus Road, a road that the Martin family is traveling on today. And all of us someday will have to travel down this road. The Emmaus Road is a long road that is marked by pain, sorrow, disappointment, denial, bargaining, and anger. These two men that was walking down this road, one of this man's name was Cephas, and the other name was the other man's name was unknown. The unknown or the unnamed person is you and me. We all have to walk down this road. As they walk, they were talking about Jesus, the hope of Israel, how he was arrested and in the mockery of a child he was condemned to die and that they crucified him on a cross and buried him in a borrowed tomb. These men hope have been dashed and broken because Jesus was their friend, their leader, and now he is dead. In verse 21, it sums up the frustration and the disappointment 
but we trusted that it have been he which should have redeemed Israel. Their dreams and hope was dashed, deferred, and denied. They have left all to follow Jesus, and now he is gone. Their fate was shaken as they think of what happened to Jesus. Like these two men, the family may have some plans to travel, to enjoy each other company. Maybe the plan was for some of you to visit Florida, to enjoy the beautiful sunshine with rose. All these hope came to a screeching halt. Can you hear them as they talk about their own frustration? The Bible says that they were walking on a seven mile journey from Jerusalem to Emmaus. And as they were walking on this journey, grief and pain and sorrow filled their heart. A visitor joined them. This visitor was Jesus himself, the same person that they were talking about. And as Jesus joined them, they did not recognize that Jesus was with them. And so he asked them, what are you talking about? The two men look. And said, are you a stranger in Jerusalem? Have you not heard what they have done to this man called Jesus of Nazareth? A prophet mighty indeed. How they condemned him and killed him and crucified him. And today is the third day since he have died. And to make matters worse, some of the women that were with us went to his graveside and when they got to his grave the stone was rolled away and his body is not there our hope was that he would have delivered Israel and now he is gone when you lose a loved one if you are not careful your hope in God can die hope is an expectation that God will do it, that God will make a way. Hope expect God to answer our prayers. And when things does not go as we expect them, we can lose our hope and feel like we are alone. Blinded by their tears, the disciples, that these two men did not recognize that Jesus was with them. And I want to say to the family today, the grief and the pain is so hard, the tears is so much that sometimes you may not even recognize that Jesus is with you. But the Bible reminds us that when we go through the rough part of the mountain, when we go through the valley of the shadow of death, that Jesus will never leave us nor forsake us. So my first point, I'm going to make three points and then I'm going to take my seat. My first point I want to say to the family and to us today is that you are not alone on your Emmaus road. The journey to Emmaus is for the disappointed. For those whose expectations have gone unmet. No one can walk down this road for you. Surely every one of us will have to walk down this road someday or some time to come. This road called the Emmaus Road is a road of grief and loss. It is a lonely winding road. At times you will feel alone. At times you will feel angry. At times you will feel bitter. But be assured that as you walk down this road you are not alone. When it seems that no one understands your grief, your pain, your sorrow, I come by to tell you today that Jesus sees your tears. He hears your cry. And I can assure you that he will not let you walk this road alone. Jesus will join you on your journey. The shock, the emotion of losing a loved one, at times will prevent you from seeing that Jesus is with you. But be assured that God is with you. Number two, Jesus is walking beside you. In your grief and in your loss. 
on your road of loneliness and despair he walks with you for the whole journey some of us will come on the journey with you for a time but we have to go back to life as usual but I can assure you that on this journey that you are on Jesus will walk the entire journey with you no matter how long your journey is your journey may be likened to as someone says a, a roller coaster sometime you'll be up Sometimes you'll be down and sometimes you're just spinning around. But no matter where you are, where your emotions are, I want you to know that Jesus is with you. Your emotion will be all over the place. Some days you're going to be okay. And then other days you're going to be a mess. It's okay for you to have these feelings and don't allow anyone to tell you not to feel the way you feel every one of us grieve differently and, and let no one tell you don't cry she's gone because tears is a language that god understand and so as you grieve know that each one in the family will grieve differently jesus will join you on this road and as he join you on this road, he wants to hear your disappointment and your heartache. And no matter how long your journey is, he's going to be with you. He walks with these men for seven miles to help them to understand and to help them to make sense of what happened. There are things in life that happen that does not make sense. But I want you to know that Jesus will walk with you and allow you through this process to make sense of what happened. And no matter how long it will take you to grieve for your sister, to grieve for your aunt, to grieve for your cousin, to grieve for your friend, Jesus will stay with you. If it takes you a hundred miles, he will not give up or leave you by yourself. Because Jesus' purpose is to make sure that you know that he will always be with you. Number three, he will reveal himself to you. To walk with you. To talk with you. To listen to you. When tears fall, he wants to assure you that he is alive and that he has conquered death and the grave. The reason Jesus joined them was to allow them to know that even though he was dead, he is alive forevermore. And because Jesus is alive, we have the victory in Jesus. Because when Jesus came from the grave, he did not only wrap up dead cloth and place them to the side. He came from the grave with the key of death. And the key of the grave and declare I am the resurrection and the life and those that die in Christ will live again and so we come with tears in our eyes but we are hopeful today because even though Rose have died we know that Rose believe in the Lord we know that Rose live for the Lord and we know that Rose died in the Lord and even in death she's waiting for her life giver to come and to take her home no matter how great our griefs are how deep it is God is still God. Sadness, grief, loss, tragedy. Nothing has knocked God from off his throne. The good news is we will see Rose again if we are faithful. And because Jesus came from the grave and walked with his disciples and tell them and show himself to them and reveal himself to them that he is the resurrection and the life the key to rose grave will not be in the hand of the keeper of the cemetery but the key to her grave 
is in the hand of Jesus Christ who is the resurrection and the life the Bible says for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first death will lose this thing and the grave will lose its victory you see Jesus loved us so much that when we study the Old Testament we have seen from Genesis all the way down in the Bible where Jesus sent his angel and mission from earth from heaven to earth but this mission will be so important this mission will be so significant to God that he will not send Gabriel Jesus himself will come and take us home so because of that one of these days the wicked will cease from trouble one of these days the righteous will be at rest for behold the bible says i made a new heaven and a new earth and the former shall not be remembered now come into mine peace will flow like a river the lion and the lamb shall live in peace and safety and so for the christian as i close death is not a period that end the great the great sentence of life but a comma that punctuate it death is not a blind alley that leads to nowhere but a time of rest from our labor and to wait the vice of the life giver one of these days death will die I've been to a lot of funeral and I must tell you I don't like funeral but there's one funeral I want to be I want to be at that funeral when death dies God will wipe the tears from our eyes the trumpet is going to sound and the dead in Christ shall rise we will see our loved one again death will give way to life tears and sorrow will be ended the graves will be open and we will see our loved one again the grave is no longer the prison house of the enemy where he holds us against our will it has become the waiting room of the redeemed where we linger until the fullness of time when christ will come to empty all of the graves for those who believe in him jesus is in charge of the grave and the dead are his property we are not forgotten by god when we die holy angels mark the spot where the believer rests and there is a record in heaven and on that appointed day god will call the angels they will go to every graveside and land or sea to escort in the arms to Jesus those who die with him and to him and for him life problems will soon be over sickness pain and disease will be no more old man debt will be out of business funeral homes and undertakers will have no more jobs tears and sorrow will be no more one of these days the wicked will cease from trouble and the righteous will be at rest one of these days the trumpet will sound and the lord himself shall descend from heaven with the voice of the archangel and the trump of god and the bible says the dead in christ shall rise first then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the cloud to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord one of these days death will give way to life sadness will turn into joy sorrow will turn into singing pain will be turned into praise our sins will be cast aside our trouble will be rectified our pain will be pacified 
the devil will be destroyed and Jesus will be glorified soon and very soon there'll be no more night soon and very soon no more death no more crying no more separation we'll be able to say good night to pain good night to backache good night to arthritis good night to loneliness good night to poverty good night to backbiting good night to sin and temptation and most importantly good night to death why because weeping may endure for a night but joy will come in the morning family you're walking down your jericho road and it's seen long and endless but i can assure you today that no matter how your long your road is jesus is with you he's walking with you he has the key of death and the grave and if you keep faithful we will see our sister again one of these days there'll be no more sorrow no more pain no more crying no more grief no more bills no more hospitals no more funerals no more bad news no more sorrow or pain and so because of the blessed hope in jesus today as i leave you i said to my sister rose sleep on my sister sleep on my sister take your rest take your rest see you in the morning see you in the morning where we'll never say goodbye see you in the morning where all will be peace and joy i don't know about you but i want to be there i want to walk on the street of gold i want to see the disciples peter james and john but most importantly when i get there i want to see my jesus the one who died for me and after we have seen Jesus, after we have seen everyone, we will see all of our loved ones. It's going to be joy and happiness and peace forever and forever and forever. I don't know about you if I don't see you again. I hope I see you on the other side. And we will see Rose. Her beautiful smile will be there. And we will never ever part again. May God bless you. May God keep you. And see you when Jesus comes. God bless you. The theme of the Bible is Jesus And how he died to save men The plan of salvation assures us He's coming back again. Are you ready for Jesus to come? 
Are you faithful in all that you do? Have you fought a good fight? Have you stood for the right? Have others seen Jesus in you? Are you ready to stand in your place? Are you ready to look in his face? Can you look up and say, Are you ready for Jesus to come? Don't cling to the world and its treasure This earth will soon pass away oh give him your love without measure he's calling you today are you to come are you faithful in all that you do do you fight a good fight do you stand for the right do others see Jesus in you Are you ready to stand in your place? Are you ready to look in his face? Can you look up and say, This is my Lord? Are you ready for Jesus? Are you ready for Jesus? Are you ready for Jesus? It's time now that we bring to some conclusion this service this afternoon. And just to get over my nervousness, let me tell you a little story about my sister, Rosabelle. Although she's two years younger than I am, we graduated from high school together. What that meant really is that she is super smart. It doesn't mean that I was dumb just means that she was super smart 
and when it was my turn to go to college in the order that we came, she didn't stand up and say, I'm smarter than you are, I need to go first. She said, you go along. Years later, she was in Detroit and visiting and um, she said, what is it that kept you from being focused when we were in high school? I simply said, they weren't teaching me what I wanted to learn. I wanted to learn how to draw and they didn't have that on the curriculum. And so once they taught me how to draw, then the other thing makes sense to me. So don't give up my siblings and my nieces and nephew. Um, you don't have to take the traditional road that everybody walks. You just walk according to God's will. All right. So on behalf of the Martin family, particularly Roosevelt Martin, uh, from her sister, only sister now, has been for a while, Genevieve, her brothers, Clarence, Lemuel, Leon, Oliver, Ralph, and myself her nieces and nephews. Let me first reach out to her most recent church, the Palm Bay Seventh-day Adventist Church, for welcoming her and accepting her as part of their fellowship. In fact, the day before this, this Saturday, after she died, they were going to read her name for the first time as a member of the Palm Bay Church. And so to those of you in Palm Bay, we know that you feel this loss likewise, and we want to say thank you for making her feel welcome in her new place of residence. She got so comfortable that she started to volunteer at the school. And so we're grateful that um, she kept her service going. But for those of you here at New Rochelle, church family and community where she spent her adult life in service to God and others. We are grateful for the love that you've shown to her over the past 40 years and the many long life friends she has made. Please know that we know and appreciate the impact you have made on her life. Let me assure you that we know because she'll often mention your names in conversation with the family. We know where you're going and when you got back, so we know you had fun together. And it's great when you can find a church family that you can worship together, you can pray together, you can cry together, but you can have fun together. And so you at New Rochelle provided that for Roosevelt, and we're grateful for that. Third, to her many colleagues from work in the financial sector and her teaching profession, she found financial security and fulfillment. We're grateful for the impact that that portion have made on her life. And finally, to so many of you who are too numerous to mention, from our days growing up together in Antigua, and especially around Jennings and Ebenezer, and I see all of you out here today. We appreciate so much the fact that you've taken the time out of your schedule to join with us in this particular homegoing celebration. We want you to know that we have cherished all the time we've spent together. And just in a side note, you know, it was tough for Roosevelt to have a boyfriend growing up as a, as a teenager. You know why? She had five brothers you had to go through. <laughs> she had eight brothers, but she followed five brothers. And so when people came to the house, we just looked at them, what are you doing here? What do you want? <laughs> like all of you, we will miss her. However, we wait for the day when the master potter will put all the broken pieces together again. And we see once again our beloved sisters, 
and brothers. Until that time, hold fast, and may God bless you all. I'd like the congregation to take this time to bow their heads as we pray for the family we invite you to pray as well almighty God our father and our friend we are so grateful today that the life you have given to Rose has been one that can be cherished. A life of service to be emulated by every member of her family and every friend. God, we are taking the time to pray, to ask for your compassion, your love, your comfort, your hand of healing as you look down upon this entire family. So many different thoughts and so many different perspectives but almighty God I pray that you will speak to their hearts and as they have heard of the word that they will understand that there is hope there is a better way and that the possibility is theirs as a beautiful opportunity to see Rose again. So Father God, I pray that your Holy Spirit will attend to them, that he will walk with them, that he will remain with them, bringing them comfort, bringing them conviction of their hearts and minds, showing them the way and explaining to them the things of God. And just like these two men on the road to Emmaus may the Holy Spirit stand by them walk with them may they be protected and may they be guided oh God and may they find assurance that in you as they trust in your word they will find peace Holy Father, in the name of Jesus, be with this family who mourns, friends, but may the blessed hope fill their heart that in Jesus they can see Rose again. O oh God, may their decision be for life and life eternal is our prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. will follow immediately after the service at 5 p.m. excuse me it is at 407 New Rochelle Well in Bronxville am I right Max Bronxville 
407 New Rochelle Road, Bronxville, at 5 p.m. We'll now turn the program over to the funeral director. To God be the glory for the things he's done. Amen? Amen. The interment of our dear sister Martin will take place at the Mount Pleasant Cemetery located in Hawthorne. That's 80 Commerce Street, Hawthorne, New York, tomorrow morning. Those of you who desire to accompany the family, we ask that you please meet us at 30 Winthrop Avenue here in New Rochelle. That's the Barney T. McClanahan Funeral Home at 10 a.m. We will be leaving the funeral home at 10 a.m. and we have an 11 o'clock appointment. And I understand Sister Martin desired to be on time. Amen? Amen. Thank you so much and may God continue to bless you. May we have some flower bearers, please. Some ladies to help us with flowers, flower bearers. And then we have our pall bearers. Would you please meet us at the rear of the church? Amen. <laughs> 